So this year is what? Television ad spending seventy billion. Mm -hmm. How much do you, if you're looking at your crystal ball, how much do you think is going to go towards targeted TV advertising? Oh, it's going to go up by twenty six cents. No, um, <laughs> I have no idea. Right? Anybody who pretends to know that answer is just kidding themselves. Mm -hmm. um, we do know that years ago, um, one of the consulting firms, I think not well known, it starts with a McKay or something. <laughs> um, they did an analysis for somebody on the cable side of the equation. And in those days, and this goes back seven years or so, they came up with an increment of $17 billion, right? I sort of get the math behind it. I'm not sure I buy it. I think there is a broader question that needs to be addressed, and that is, what happens to distribution? Mm -hmm. What happens to center of store for CPG? What happens to physical shelf space? Because if you can't show your product on physical shelf space, then the only shelf space you've got is the virtual shelf space on that screen, mm -hmm. right? And if that screen is targetable, and in some way interactive, likely through a second screen device or application, mm -hmm. right? Then that becomes your shelf space, right? Yes, yeah, so let's talk about that a little bit because a major theme throughout Advertising Week is multi-platform content and advertising delivery. And uh, it seems like that's what everyone's talking about, that's what brand marketers want. But in reality, the execution of that is not that simple in terms of actually delivering the ads and measuring how those ads perform across screens. So what's your viewpoint on, on cross-platform advertising and how it's going to develop? So <clears throat> there are really two parts to that question, right? Because um, you take a medium like television, and today that is a cross-device medium, mm -hmm. right? Um, you look at some of the declining numbers that our friends at Nielsen are reporting, and if you do a deep dive, you quickly understand that yes, there has been a fundamental shift, and that some viewers are spending more and more time with Netflix and Amazon Prime-like objects, and that behaviors are truly beginning to shift, mm -hmm. right? And there is some loss of audience just as a function of that. But there is also a substantial loss of audience that is a function of a broken or damaged yardstick. Mm -hmm. And we are simply unable in the current currency, is that redundant? <laughs> I didn't mean it to be. The, the currency in use today, right? fails to capture cross-device viewing as it should, right? Despite OCR, OCX, and all those efforts, we're just not doing the job we need to do. And uh, media, in order for us to be good practitioners, we have to have decent measurement to start with. And today, that's a huge challenge. So that's part one. Part two, uh, talks about how the different devices interact with each mm -hmm. other. And truth of the matter is, in today's world, right, if someone is sitting there and tweeting while they're watching a TV show, or they're on a social network, well, we know for a fact that the tweets escalate during the commercial break, right? So for those of us in this room who are in the business and buying and selling commercial breaks, do you guys think it's a good thing? Right? I'm not sure I do. If you're on a social site, mm -hmm. are you talking about the show? Or are you looking at your friend's wall? Mm -hmm. Right? And I think the point here is we know that there are more hours of media consumption per day than there are waking, non-working hours. We know people are multitasking. And yet, it's quite apparent 
that the multitasking that takes place today disrupts and damages engagement to both devices. So it's not quite one plus one. Mm -hmm. It may be 0.6 plus 0.6. It still may be better than the one we started with, but it's not ideal. And I think we're moving to a stage where we're going to be doing a lot of experimentation to see if that second screen device can amplify what's on the first screen. So do you have the answer? I do, but I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we put you in the hot seat, <laughs> literally. I, I'm sure we will see projects that, so let me articulate it this way. If that's the lean back device and the smartphone or iPad is the comfortably lean forward device, then the question is, should the sports stats be on this screen or should they be on this screen where I can manipulate? Mm -hmm. Should the recipe for the cooking show be superimposed over the skillet so I can't see the cooking technique, and they're not up there long enough for me to copy them down? Or should they go to a second screen device where I can just drop them into a folder and refer to them later? Yeah, I know I can go to the URL, but how many of you have ever gone to a URL that's posted on a TV screen? Right? It's kind of silly. Um, what can be done doesn't mean anybody's actually going to do it. Sure. Um, We've actually been involved in a bunch of focus groups that sort of probe at how you can have multiple devices that contribute to engagement through, through synergies rather than disrupting engagement. And I think that's really the future. So <clears throat> it's a matter of how content is consumed across different devices and the role, in fact, of the different devices for the different components of the content, right? And so by the way, when we do that, then you can have interactivity levels laid on over our normal commercials. You can do special offers. You can do couponing. You can do um, book a test drive. Um, you can do ancillary messaging. Mm -hmm. So. Um, <clears throat> if the ad up there is for a car, and I know that I'm reaching the female member of household, and we know she's a young mom, then we talk about the convenience and the safety and the interior comfort of the car, mm -hmm. because that's her priority. Mm -hmm. And if it's a 30-year-old single guy, we talk about the performance and engine capabilities, mm -hmm. because that's his priority, right? Got it. So I two didn't more mean to typecast it that way, but. So two more questions related mm -hmm. to this conversation. So does that change the way the media is bought? Because right now it's bought very channel specific, by TV, by digital, by mobile. So based on what you're saying, are we changing it to by, by ad format or by, by audience? I'd suggest it's a, an even broader question than that. Where does the money come from? Is it a paid media budget? Mm -hmm. Or does it come from trade support? Does it come from couponing? Right? I mean, it's a very, very broad question. Mm -hmm. My instinct is that we are going to see almost complete practice redevelopment over the course of the next few years because that's how significant these changes are. And I think our clients are going to have to look at their own organizational structure mm -hmm. and rethink those because they're just as siloed, and in some cases more siloed, than we are, mm -hmm. right? So now, I'm not suggesting in any way that we're going to lose specialism. I think we're always going to have that. But our practice will restructure. It has to. Mm -hmm. 